We are live here on Facebook. Uh, hello, everyone. We are going to be talking about management of back pain. Well, all of us have been working from home and I know I'm getting back pain every day, but um, we'll be talking about how, how you can manage your back pain using um, acupuncture and distant acupuncture. Joining me is Dr. Kapoor, who is the recipient of Padma Shri for developing the practice of scientific acupuncture in India. He has uh, healed thousands and thousands of people all for the last 20, 30 years. And this is the first time in India when Padma Shri was given in the field of acupuncture. I just want to emphasize that. In addition, he has written quite a few books on acupuncture. He has developed acupuncture as an independent system of healthcare therapy in India. He's currently chairman of the Apex Committee of the Acupuncture for Promotion of Acupuncture in India. I am Amita from Nourish Dot, a platform for natural and holistic therapies. I am honored to invite Dr. Kapoor, who's joining me live from Delhi, India. Welcome, Dr. Kapoor. Such an honor to be with you. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, Amita, for such a lovely introduction. Uh, actually, you know, it has been a big, uh, uh, long journey of 38 years now that I've been practicing acupuncture. I also happen to be heading the Department of Medical Acupuncture at Sir Gangaram Hospital, which yes. is a leading hospital in New Delhi, mm -hmm. where I developed this uh, department about 22 years ago. Wow. And uh, I chair the department there, and I've got four consultants also working with me there now. I am also uh, very actively... Uh, video. All right, so I think uh, Dr. Kapoor, we are ready to get started. Um, okay. So uh, yes, uh, yes, I did read about that you were heading the department. Uh, there was so much to talk about you. So I was trying to, um, you know, abridge it in like two sentences, which is yeah. impossible for me to do. But but I know, you know, Dr. Kapoor has pioneered the, the use of acupuncture in a, in a country like India, where there's so many other uh, alternative um, medicine that's available. But yeah. Gangaram is, is a, one of the leading hospitals hospitals in Delhi, India, and he's been pioneering, heading the acupuncture department for the last 22 years. So uh, welcome, and we are ready to get started, Dr. Kapoor. Uh, thank you, uh, Amita. Uh, well, today's topic is very interesting. Back pain is one of the commonest problems which all of us uh, see in our uh, lifetime at least once. It is a very well-known known saying that each one of us born on earth will have a back pain at least once in his or her lifetime. And acupuncture today is very popular in treatment of back pains. So today I'm going to uh, go through with you with uh, uh, needling methods and also needleless acupuncture techniques. Why I especially want, want to talk about the needleless acupuncture techniques is because a lot of patients who come to us are quite needle apprehensive. So it's important to also uh, know, uh, tell everybody uh, that you know there are so many needleless techniques available today and uh, we should use these also particularly in patients who are uh, not res non-responsive to the classical acupuncture techniques and also in patients who are apprehensive so first uh, in my presentation today i would like to talk about the upper back and shoulder pain so I'll start from the upper back, then the mid, then the lower back. I'll be uh, going in that order. So now, uh, what I have realized over these many years of my practice is that initially when I started my practice, I was concentrating more on using uh, the traditional acupuncture uh, protocols. But I realized that a lot of my patients were, uh, maybe about 20% of my patients would come back saying that they, uh, whenever I would needle locally, they would feel that there was an increase in the pain. So you see what happens is after, if after your first session of treatment, the patient comes for your next session and he starts saying that he has got an increase in his symptoms, I think probably that can be a bit of a uh, down uh, thing because everybody wants to, uh, they normally come to you not as a first resort, they come to you maybe as a second or a last resort of treatment and they're always expecting something good to happen. So if there is an increase in pain, Probably, uh, although uh, we were taught that 
increase in pain is also not an uh, important issue it is a, it is rather an indicator that your body is been responsive but the patients want change so over the last uh, 7 to 10 years that i started learning tung and tan style of distant acupuncture have i changed my style of treating patients with back pain so for upper back and shoulder pain what now i do is i would use the points uh, if uh, 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 my uh, audience today it does know about tung and tan style acupuncture it is perfectly great they will understand it very quickly if they do not know it i would re really appreciate that they must add these styles of acupuncture to their practice it will make an enormous difference to the results as well as to the gratification which they receive from their patients so the upper back and shoulder pain uh, there are two very good points which are on the palm of the hand on the thinar eminence these are points known as 22.01 and 02 they are located about one chun below the uh, 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 when you uh, make the fist it is one chun below the uh, uh, margin of the uh, index and the uh, and the thumb and uh, 22.01 and 02 is one chun below that so these are two points and you need to need to needle the sensitive point out of these then 77.09 is a very important uh, distal point which is very effective for upper back and shoulder pain and this is located about 4.5 chun below stomach 36 we all know very well stomach 36 this is 4.5 chun below stomach 36 77.18 is again a very good point for treating uh, this uh, problem uh, and this look this point is located about 1.5 chun below spleen 9 88.0910 and 11 is a group of three points which the locations the first one 09 is located at the superior middle border of the patella the 0 the 10 is located two chun above that and 11 is for the two chun above that then we also use the classical acupuncture point stomach 31 now in acute cases you can also bleed the visible veins in this area on the thinner eminence the area of 2201 and 02 and the distal points which can be included uh, to this protocol can be spleen 5 liver 5 gall bladder 39 then uh, we all uh, should also be very well aware of the abdominal style of acupuncture wherein we could uh, look for uh, tender points ashi uh, points in the ren channel between ren 15 to ren 22 and also on the kidney channel between kidney 22 to kidney 7 now uh, kidney 22 to kidney 27 now uh, what's important if you see in my protocol is i have not used any uh, local points in the upper back and shoulder area so what happened what would happen would be sometimes the patients who come to us may be feeling quite uh, surprised as to why a doctor has not used any local needles there so a good way to uh, la that also is to just locally uh, use a tdp lamp which i would normally do on all such patients so i would use a local a tdp lamp for about uh, 15 to 20 minutes on the local area of pain but the needling i would do at these specific points and the results are very good then for mid spine pain i will uh, recommend strongly to bleed ub40 and ub60 bilaterally i will be talking about bleeding uh, later on also in my presentation but i would like to tell all the uh, uh, people uh, my colleagues who are listening to this uh, webinar today that for any uh, spine problem ub40 is a great point to bleed in cup and for any problem in the upper limb pains uh, lung 5 is a great point to bleed in cup so uh, uh, any time you are having any patients who come into you for shoulder pain for elbow pain for wrist joint pains do not even think twice just do a bleeding and cupping at lung 5 same way anybody coming to you for pain in the thigh in the calf in the buttocks in the upper back mid back lower back you be 40 is a great point to do bleeding and cupping and you your patients will almost always go back feeling very good uh another distal point which for mid spine pain which i would always use will be points 11.09 11 and 12 all these three points are very good tung points 
the uh, all the three points are located on the middle finger itself uh, then uh, same 22.0102 the location of which i already explained to you on the thinner eminence they can be very useful for mid spine pain also and 22.08 and 09 they again are great points to use for mid spine pain and both these points are located along the small intestine meridian uh, uh, 22.08 is about 2.5 chun from the wrist crease and 09 is 1.5 chun from the wrist crease on the SI meridian. Then uh, continuing with my uh, mid-spine uh, pain treatment protocol, 77010203 are great points and they are very, very uh, uh, wonderful points for neck pain also cervical spondylitis and mid spine pain. Zero one is located about 3.5 chun above the base of the heel. Zero two is two chun above that. Zero three is further two chun above that. So these three points are very good for mid spine pain. Then zero five is a acupuncture point, which is located about through three chun above the external malleolus or the lateral malleolus. Zero six is further two chun above zero five. And 07 is two chun further above 06. So these are three points along the gallbladder meridian and very good again for these uh, conditions. Then there is another distal point protocol which we can use for mid spine pain, which is the QC, Yi, Er, and San. These three acupuncture points are located at LI 12 and the uh, the Er, the Yi is the two chun further above and San is further two chun above. And then we have the grade three points, 88.25, and 2.7. 88.25 is nothing but the uh, traditional gallbladder 31 point. The 2.6 is 1.5 to an anterior to that point, And 2.7 is 1.5 to an posterior to the 88.25. Distally, you can also use uh, a DU26 if patient has got an acute mid-spine pain and a combination of SI3 and UB65. Then uh, for lower back point, pain, I'll come to the protocol which I would use traditionally, uh, will be 22.04 and 05. Very, very effective two points, distal points for uh, known as Lingu and Dabai. They, have been, they are one of the uh, commonest points used by uh, Tung in Tung's protocol. Very effective for low back pain. So, then uh, SI3, SI4 and SI5, also very, very good points to use for this type of a problem. Then UB58, uh, if the patient has got uh, more pain on one side of the back, you can use 58 on the same side and 60 also on the same side. And it's a very good thing to use uh, the front group of points also in some patients who are non-responsive to even the distal protocol I told above, wherein you can use ASHI points between REN4 to REN7 from kidney three to kidney five, and from kidney 12 to kidney 16. These are great points to use in patients who have uh, low back pain. So, so, so many times you would be thinking that, you know, we are uh, using uh, these uh, number of points there. So what I would normally do would be, I will first make the patient lie down supine, uh, 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 very superficially needles the point, the reactive points between REN4, REN7, kidney 3, kidney 5, and kidney 12, kidney 16. Uh, just uh, needle and remove the needles. So I will now retain the needles there. And the distal point protocol is the one where I'll retain the needle. And as, as I said to you, classically, to make the patient also feel as if some treatment has uh, been done for the area of pain also, I would just put a TDP lamp there. But I would not, not put any needles there. For paraspinal pain, I would add a reactive point between lung 5 to lung 6. For the quadratus lumborum pain, I would use gallbladder 41 on the same side. And for the sacroiliac joint pain, I would again needle next to the steroid process of the ulna. And also I could use distal points, triple warmer 15 and DU20. Then a lot of patients would come to us with a generalized back pain. Well, they will say they have, point, they have pain all over the spine upper, mid, and lower spine. So when you have such patients who have a generalized back pain, Tung treatment protocol is very, very useful. 
88.09 and 10 also we have told the location and 17 also we have already discussed the location. Then back pain due to weak kidney yang, you must almost always use moxa. And where we must use moxa, UB23 and kidney 7. Very, very useful to use uh, these two points, UB23 and kidney 7 with moxibustion. Those of you who like to use uh, moxon needle, great, you can use that. But otherwise, you can also use roll moxa or even rice moxa at these points is very, very useful. And another area of concern is scoliosis. Uh, a lot of patients would come to us with pain and when we do the MRIs and, or their X-rays, then we, we normally get investigated already and we see scoliotic changes and the patient is not getting relief from the pain. This com point combination, which I am now sharing with you on screen, is a great point combination to be used for such patients who come to us. So 44.01 is a point which is located about 1.52 proximal to lung 5, very useful. 88.03 is about 9 chun above the heading or the tip of the patella. And 88.1213 and 14 is a, 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 a three point combination on the medial side of the thigh, whereas a, where 88.12 is the mid, midpoint of the medial side of the thigh, and 13 is about uh, three chun above uh, 88.12 and 14 is about three chun below 88.12. So this is also a great point combination. Then in addition to this, you can use the classical points DU26, LI11, UV60, UV22, UV23 and such patients moxibustion at UV18 and UV20 is great. Then a lot of patients will also be coming to us when they come, when I'm covering my back problem for tailbone pain or coccyx pain. So tailbone or coccyx pain can be very well treated by uh, points along the arm, the 33, 10, 11, and 12, the tung points. Very good. The uh, This is a three-point protocol again. First point is about three chun above the pisiform bone. The next is three chun further above that. And the third point is 1.5 chun above the last point on the SI channel. Then, 55.04 and 05, very useful points on the sole of the foot. 55.04 is on the plantar surface between the third and fourth metatarsal bones. And 55.05 is again on the plantar surface of the foot between the fourth and the fifth metatarsal bones. But these are very, very painful points. I do not needle these points. I almost always will use a point laser and these points. And that also works very well. You can also use an electrostim there, uh, needle uh, electrostimulator type of a thing, electrostim at these points. That also can be useful. So avoid needling here because it can be very painful to the patient. Same way, 66.01 is a classical location of spleen 2. Uh, here also, I would avoid a needle because it's very painful. So I would always uh, use a laser here also. 77.01 and 02, I've already told you the locations above the heel, two-point protocol. Uh, the first point being about 3.5 chun above the heel and the uh, next point about two chun above the previous point. Then, very important pro problem, which is associated with uh, lumbar disc prolapse, uh, is known as, is called sciatica. And all of, almost all of us uh, see such patients every day in our practice. So it's a very good uh, thing to know the protocol for sciatica, which we follow in the distal point protocol. Uh, 22.0304 and 05, we always use on the opposite side. Suppose the patient has a right side sciatica, so I will use these three points on the opposite side and do the leg raising test after putting these three needles. And lo and behold, as soon as you put these three points, the patient's leg raising can be improved. And that in itself is a big psychological booster to the pain uh, to the patient because he or she starts feeling the relief immediately. Then 22.06 is a great point for sciatica along the gallbladder channel and 07 also. And 08 and 09 is great distal points for the pain along the urinary bladder uh, channel. Uh, let me tell you a brief uh, so that you uh, also know 
why we are using 06 07 for gall bladder because these two points are located on the triple vomer channel so we also know by our distal point protocol that uh, gall bladder and triple vomer are uh, shao yang so uh, that's why gall bladder uh, uh, pain can be treated by using the triple vomer point and same way for the ub si is the tai yang channel so that's why we use points on the si channel to treat the ub sciatica continuing with my sciatica protocol that is 3.05 and 07 and a uh, very good point wherein the sciatica is associated with also sacrococcygeal pain and so these two points are also very very good 33.05 uh, uh, 07 and uh, 33.12 also is also very good point distal points and almost always will use these points on the uh, opposite side of the pain and 33.08 and 09 i'll use on the healthy side uh, uh, which is again uh, 08 is about 6.5 tune above the pisiform bone and 09 is 1.5 tune further up above the 08 points then uh, uh, these points also i use for sciatica which i have already enumerated before also but i have repeat for your uh, kind information 88.1718 and 19 on the same side Or what I say, the affected side, which are the four horses, two five, two six, and two seven, again on the same side. And very good uh, protocol to combine with this is you can e uh, bleed the area between UB twenty two and twenty three. Try and bleed the react most reactive points here, and UB forty. Again and again, I'll repeat, UB forty is great for bleeding and cupping in all such patients. Then with patients who have bone spurs. Uh, we also can use the points 55, 04, and 05. Now these points are again located on the sole of the foot, as I tell, told you. I would avoid needling here, and I'll prefer using a laser there. 77.09 is point already enumerated before. Also, is about 4.5 tune below stomach 36. 77.11 is 5 tune below 77.09, and 77.14 is. 1.5 to lateral to 77.09 and 18 i already told you is about 15 1.5 to uh, below spleen 9 and 88.12 is the midpoint of the thigh medial side of the thigh then for guide points which we use for sciatica for pain along the ub channel the guide points used are ub62 64 and 65 on the same side for pain along the gall bladder channel i will use gb41 and for groin pain uh, i will use uh, liver 3 kidney 3 spleen 3 and stomach 43 the reason is very simple because all the three yin channels uh, liver spleen and kidney which pass along the medial side are the ones which are causing the groin pain so the distal points to use uh, or guide points to use for uh, pain along the groin is liver 3 kidney 3 and spleen 3 now uh, i shift over to a very interesting uh, uh, condition which i find very often in my practice and i'm sure you must also be getting few patients in your practice ladies particularly who have chronic ligament injury due to wearing high heels so such patients they can, they can develop a back pain they can develop a small si sacroiliac joint pain and also knee pain so in such patients i have found the protocol which i have mentioned below to be very effective which is a combination of kidney 6 along with ashi points around ub23 and ub63 so this is a great point combination and if used uh, this will almost always relieve the pain which is caused due to high heels then another uh, system of therapy which i have recently added to my protocol is what is known as kinetic acupuncture in kinetic acupuncture uh, we do not retain needles what we will do would be we will uh, use mostly the hoto gig points and the ub23 24 25 points uh, uh, for kinetic acupuncture for back pains but we will not retain the needles what we i will do would be that in such points you will uh, go a bit more deeper and uh, 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 wait till you get a muscle twitch and as soon as you get get a bit of a muscle twitch you will just withdraw the needle and retain it at the most superficial level that's the way kinetic acupuncture is done 
So for a tight psoas muscle, say for example, quadratus lumborum, you, you will use kinetic acupuncture. In this, the patient lies on in a lateral position. You stretch the affected leg and flex the hip of the lower leg. Then you locate the most tender point on the psoas and then make the patient lift the affected leg. So when you have got the twitch on that point, which was the most tender point, you will just release the needle right to the surface. So you will not retain it deep. And then you will again make the patient lift his or her leg and you will find that the tightness in the psoas muscle gets relieved almost immediately. The, uh, along with kinetic acupuncture, the distal acupuncture points which you can use are UB57, 65, 67, and in the DU channel, DU16, DU3, SI3, and LI4. Then for release of the muscles of the lower back, as I said before also, you can also use points along the UB line 1, UB line 2, and the points uh, anterior to the anterior superior alex spine. But almost always you will have to look for most tender points and go and do deep needling. And uh, when you get a muscle twitch, just uh, pull the muscle, pull the needle back to the most superficial level and make the patient uh, move that uh, painful uh, um, uh, uh, limb and you'll be able to see the relief immediately. For release of the SI joint, you can use uh, DU uh, channel points, UB31 to 34, plus gallbladder 31 for, with kinetic acupuncture again. And the distal points which can be used after kinetic acupuncture can be UB26, GB20, LI4, LI11, liver 3, SI3, UB57, 62, and 65. Then scalp points which I use to treat back pain. Again, I'll look for reactive points between DU70 to DU20 and needle them. Then, I, uh, I'm now going to share with you uh, a very interesting Japanese style uh, treatment protocol, which I recently learned during my trip to uh, Japan, where I happened to do a very advanced course on Japanese style of acupuncture. And I'm now using this protocol also in my practice. So in patients who have uh, who you've tried Tung style also, and you're still not getting relief with pain, you can try this protocol. And something I have already probably covered a few of these points in that also, but I think this is something which I have specially made a slide for you so that this is something which you can always take back with you. So for uh, acute low back pain, particularly for the acute cases, you look for tight abdominal areas. So never, in an acute low back pain, never ever do local needling. Look for tight abdominal uh, areas around, or points around REN12, stomach 25, REN5, REN4, and treat them with moxa. You can treat moxa cones, or you can even use sticky moxa. And you should also look for tightness and pain around the points gallbladder 31, stomach 36, gallbladder 34, liver 4, and UB63 on the affected side. And you can retain needles at the ashi point for about 10 minutes. After you've done this, you can turn the patient face down, check the entire back for tight muscles, and you can use needles at the ashi points, plus UB58 and 59 for about 10 minutes. And also you look for tenderness at kidney nine and apply 10 moxa cones. I normally use the rice moxa cones. Another very special technique for quick results is you can look for visible blood vessels in the area of the pain and bleed and cup them. And again, as I said to you, abdominal acupuncture is also a very important part of my protocol. So I will use uh, the tender points at REN4, REN6, REN12, examine these points. Don't need all of them, only the reactive points. DU4, DU12, UB39, UB59, Yao Yan is extra point. And also, you can use ginger moxa on a, which are areas which are hard areas on the back. You'll almost always find some patients who have got very hard, very stiff areas. So very good idea is to use ginger moxa. <clears throat> and after you've done this protocol, you can follow it up by placing serine zero needles at these reactive points. They are great needles to use after you finish your treatment. Then coming to ear acupuncture, again, a very important uh, distal acupuncture treatment protocol. Uh, I would normally, uh, after uh, before I uh, finish my treatment, uh, 
after needling and before the patient leaves my practice, particularly patients who are in acute back pain, I will almost always uh, retain a few needles at the ear. And the good points to use are Shenmen, almost all these patients are, have got some stress element. Kidney, very good point. Liver, spleen. And in the back, just uh, in that area of the back, we have the uh, entire uh, lumbosacral spine located. So you can also look for, and the uh, cervical dorsal spine also. So you can look for uh, uh, reactive points in the back of the auricle for the lumbar spine, cervical and dorsal spine, depending upon where your patient is complaining of pain and put a retaining needles there also. Then, all such patients who have had chronic back pain and come to us are under stress. So, to treat that stress which is being caused because of any cro chronic pain, even patients who have fibromyalgia, I would use this protocol, but back pain, almost always I must use it. So, you palpate the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the kidney too for tenderness. And if it is tender, the side which is tender on the same side, you, you will use kidney 7, kidney 10, and kidney 27, and triple warmer 5. Or you could look for reactive points along the superior middle border of the greater trochanter and use the same acupuncture points. If you find that there are reactive points around that area, do not needle there, but use a combination of kidney 7, kidney 10, kidney 27, and triple warmer 5. You can also use points gallbladder 14, 15, 16, and 17, and align parallel to this, starting from the outer canthus of the eye, and only use the reactive points. And this also is great. These are also great points to relieve the stress caused due to any chronic pain, particularly the back pain. Now I come to the needleless techniques of acupuncture. Uh, as we discussed the needle uh, techniques with needles before, the needle less techniques of acupuncture are all, all also great, particularly in pa elderly patients, patients who are needle apprehensive, or in patients whom you have found go good results, but suppose the, uh, a plateau comes. So there also such needle less techniques can be used. So first of them, one is the bloodletting. Now, uh, as per the Tung's protocol, for bloodletting, the bed for sciatica, I would use the uh, UV40 zone. It's a zone in uh, as per Tung. So you can look for visible veins there and bleed and cup there. And the zone DT8 to 08 to 09 uh, is, is also very good. And uh, you make the patient lie down prone and check three areas. You palpate for tender points in the areas DT08 to 09. And then you look for bleedable veins in the UB40 area. And you also palpate for tender points in the piriformis area. And if absolutely no tender points, in the upper back, bloodletting is not indicated. So only you will bleed if there are tender points in these areas. If there are no tender points, then moxibustion is the best method because that means all these patients are deficient patients and they, uh, it is not a good idea to do bleeding and cupping in such patients. But almost 70% of the patients who come to me uh, will have uh, tender points in these areas. And if we do bleeding and cupping, we show very good results. Generally, on the first treatment itself, I will bleed the DT0809 and UB40 area. And after bleeding, which is known as wet cupping also, uh, that tender spot will become much less tender. And the second treatment, you can treat the, bleed the DT0809 again, but normally I'll repeat this after a gap of one week. Chronic toxic pain, which is not tender to palpation, that's a clue that distal bleeding will likely work. Patient had just one shot dark visible vein around gallbladder 36, which I bled. So that means you can look for areas which uh, of visible veins around GB36. And if you bleed there, you will also be able to give relief in patients with such pain. And after this one session only, 90% pain was reduced in such patients. And a week later, she wanted to work on something else entirely. So you can understand that even one session of doing a bleeding around that uh, area can give patients such quick relief. Now I come to uh, another needleless technique, which I learned very recently from a Japanese neurosurgeon, Professor Nagata, and that is known as PNST, and also in full term is prickling neurostimulation technique. Now this is uh, a technique wherein uh, Dr. Nagata he has used the dermatome theory, 
of treatment. He doesn't use any needles. He's got a special probe, which which he use, does is, does prickling at uh, specific dermatomes. So uh, uh, it, a lot of these dermatomes are also located along acupuncture meridians and points. But his theory is basically based on the dermatome theory. Uh, uh, it's a great theory. I, I am one of the first ones in India to have learned it. Me and my wife were the only ones in India. And now we've started teaching also doctors in India uh, the PNSD the treatment uh, because it's uh, very, very useful and it can be done very effectively in many, many conditions. The prickling treatment, which I do for low back pain, uh, for patients who are needle apprehensive, uh, would be I will prickle with that tool which I told you. It's a full course. So uh, uh, at the end of it, uh, if any one of you is keen, do let Amita know. We I will be more than happy to do a, a webinar on the tongue style acupuncture, the tan style of acupuncture, or the uh, PNSD style of acupuncture. So you do prickling along the acupuncture lines, which is the zero line. He calls the DU channel, which we uh, know in classical acupuncture, he calls it as the zero line. The Huato GIG points, the medial and the lateral UV lines from L1 to S2. For acute cases, uh, he would uh, call twice a day patients also. And he will, after he's finished the prickling treatment, which normally takes not more than three to five minutes. He doesn't use any needles at all. So he will just use the prickling. And after he's finished the treatment, he will ask the patient to go back home and use a hair dryer for doing heat treatment at the area of pain. And also he will recommend strongly the patients to do a short hot shower therapy at part time. Then for sciatica and peripheral neuropathy also, there's a protocol for doing PNST or prickling therapy, wherein we will do prickling along the piriformis muscle. We'll prickle along the course of the sciatic nerve. We will prickle at the zero points from L1 to S2 and the Huato GIG line and we'll prickle along the UB, GB, spleen, and kidney channel of the legs. And after we have done the prickling, he will almost always do embedding of zero needles around the piriformis muscle, the zero points of L4 and L5, which is nothing else but the, uh, as I said to you, the DU channel, UB31, 32, UB40, UB57, kidney 2, kidney 3, kidney 1, and spleen 4. And these are very, these zero needles can be easily placed there and retained for about 10 days and patient doesn't have any discomfort whatsoever. Then for thoracolumbar facial pain, for lumbar pain, also the, we use the same protocol of prickling along that area of pain. For lumbar canal stenosis patients who complain of numbness, uh, the protocol used with PNSDs, we'll prickle the zero points from L1 to S2 uh, and then along the medial UV line, the lateral UV line, along the common peroneal nerve pathway. And after we've done the prickling, we will follow it up by uh, embedding zero needles at zero points L3 to L5, UV39, GB34, 35, UV31 and 32. And also we have a basic PNSD protocol, which is done on the scalp, which is basically to do the balancing of the autonomic nervous system. We also do prickling along the spleen channel on the leg and also we can prickle on the medial and lateral side of the foot. And after we have done that, we can embed zero needles at kidney one, kidney two, kidney three and spleen four. And these are very, very useful points, particularly for patients who have got numbness on the sole of the foot. Then another treatment, uh, which is needleness, which is also very effective for back pain, whether it's an upper, mid or lower back is moxa box. We all know that. Then scraping is another useful therapy which I use in my practice, also known as gua sha therapy. Uh, the scraping materials used are the scraping plates, the scraping combs, and the lubricators we choose are vegetable oils, which are which help in activating the chi and the blood and relieve the pain and inflammation. The materials are all there for you to see. Almost all of you must be knowing these. The contraindication to scraping is patients who have a tendency to bleed like patients with thrombopenia, leukemia, and which are connected with any patients where there, there's a, any fracture has been there, don't uh, do scraping over that area, where there's purulish, purulent uh, discharges, don't do it there, skin lesion with ulcers, idiopathic or malignant tumors, you shouldn't do it, and in the female lower abdomen during menstruation or pregnancy. Then cupping therapy again, this is bamboo cups, you can see for yourself, 
again a very very effective treatment for patients who come to complain of uh, uh, upper mid or lower back pain uh, application of cupping techniques there are different types of cups you all know bamboo jars cupping glasses in blood cupping the skin is scratched with a sterilized lancet before the cups are applied then there are suction cups now available of plastic material and the therapist will palpate the patient's back to find out if there is any hardness or swelling then you can apply up to 12 cups to those places cupping is usually done to the left and right of the spine but painful joints or muscle hardening such as in the abdominal legs also can be treated with cupping and the cupping glasses remain on the skin for about 10 to 15 minutes so there are different types of cupping you can try do a dry cups if if dry cupping is preferred particularly in patients who have poor circulation as i told you before also patients who do not have any tender spots so there you it's, i prefer doing a dry cupping that means no bleeding but wherein patients have got uh, tender or most tender point or reactive points there i will prefer doing a bleeding cupping then divergent channels again it's a very interesting uh, a full webinar which i can do for you wherein we uh, find out the imbalance in the divergent channels and accordingly we can use a treatment protocol to treat such patients also uh, this is uh, uh, i'm sharing two case studies very interesting one is a 54 year old male who was suffering from a back pain from t4 to l4 t11 to l4 and uh, uh, the bladder and kidney divergent channel pathways follow the spine and these channels were used the divergent channel points were used to treat this condition now uh, we come to laser acupuncture another needleless technique here i use pulsed and continuous wavelengths uh, type of lasers we have got different lasers in our practice which we use we have indigenously now built them here so that the cost effectiveness of the laser is there so we have got helmets which contain uh, 36 lights of 50 milliwatt each 760 nanometer 830 nanometer and 635 nanometers so all three are there so uh, uh, these are the ones which we use for uh, in the helmet uh, in the back then we have also have a, a belt like a lumbar belt which has got uh, these uh, laser diodes there So 760 nanometer eight uh, diode diodes are there, and 830 nanometers eight diodes are there. So in all 16 diodes and 50 milliwatt each diode, and they are also very useful. And then we also have a shower laser, uh, 760 nanometer, uh, 50 milliwatt each, and there are four lights in four diodes in that. So we have got three different types of, uh, and all of them have got both the pulse and the continuous wavelengths available. for chronic pains i will almost always use the pulse laser and only for very acute pains we will use the continuous wave uh, lasers then acutron is uh, 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 i have also been using in my practice you all must be knowing in the us is a, a gentleman who developed it in the us only acutron mentor where he uses milli and micro amp currents at acupuncture points to do these treatment protocols without needles then acuting is a, a method of, uh, like an acu graph where you do a meridian testing of all the energy meridians to test the energy flow and this also is greatly helpful in deciding our treatment protocols then iron pumping cords again uh, uh, i have done full uh, webinars on this subject also a very interesting subject again a lot of patients who would not be you know, responding to classical acupuncture i would use only iron pumping cords and here we use minimal number of points i will give you two examples uh, patients with sciatica shoulder and low back problems not getting uh, better with any of the uh, protocols mentioned above i use just ub62 and si3 and put a black uh, diode on the ub62 and a red diode on the si3 these are iron pumping cords and they in itself were able to relieve the pain of patients and again the these are also examples of treatment with iron pumping cords thank you very much for a very patient listening for the uh, webinar today evening i hope you do go you do go back uh, uh, having learned a lot from what i wanted to share with you and i am uh, ready for any questions 
uh, which you would like to ask her. It's an amazing, amazing session. Uh, I, you know, I've uh, got uh, acupuncture done myself, you know, being in California, I had a shoulder pain. And some of the things you were talking about, like the moxa and, you know, the cupping and, and uh, you know, the even the needles in the, uh, in the foot, right? The, the, the back of the foot. The, so, so I've got, uh, I've got all that done. <laughs> I was just very, very, very painful, as you said, but, but it worked, you know, it, uh, it, it worked. I mean, my shoulder, see, I can lift it right now. Great. So amazing, amazing, amazing work. Uh, so yes, we are getting questions. All right. So someone is asking, could you please show helmet laser, sir? The, uh, I think you talked about the helmet part, the helmet laser. Yeah, yeah. I cannot show you here because I am uh, doing this webinar sitting at home. Okay. At my clinic. So, uh, in any case, if you, uh, Amita, if you can ask them uh, to yeah. drop in an email, just share my email yeah. with them, and I'll be okay. more than happy to uh, give them all the information. Yeah, and, and then, you know, uh, uh, I mean, um, other things which we will be launching next year would be the programs, you know, the online classes, which would be more detailed. Yeah. So, we, we'll be working with Dr. Kapoor to bring you that. But any other questions you have, uh, Dr. Kapoor cannot show you the helmet right now because he's home. Um, but any other questions you have, you're welcome to ask right now. I think uh, I think the 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 way you uh, explained so many different things, which I I'm an end user, and you know um, I'm not aware of so many different protocols that you talked about. The Japanese protocol, the the laser, I mean the electrical part of it, the cupping, the moxa, the gosha. You know these are like amazing tools for all the users, yeah. and yeah. and. Most of them don't know. They end up getting going for the surgery, and that's what you don't need to go to surgery. And the best part, uh, Mita, to know is that a lot of patients would. Uh, that's why I said that percentage is getting very high. Between 20 to 25 percent patients, if you treat them locally at the area of pain, they may complain of an increase in the pain, which sometimes yeah. can be detrimental for to uh, to make a decision whether I want to go for a second session or not. This has happened with me in my practice also. So that is why uh, I was always looking for an answer wherein I could think of or get treatment wherein I could not use any local points and still give relief to my patient. And here is the answer. So last about seven, eight years that I learned Tung style acupuncture and the TAN style, I found the results to be great without lo using any local needles at the area of pain. And if you have to use anything locally, you could use DDP lamp or as I said to you, uh, the latest is these series zero needles, which are placed at the points or the reactive points and left there for 10 days. And they're so safe. And they're so, uh, the, the elasticity of the needles is so good that they can stay with you very comfortably for about 10 days. So it's great to use a combination treatment. So the good point is that acupuncture is progressing as a science and progressing everywhere all over the world and globally today. And this is what the, we are already uh, in plans in uh, the All Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, of starting an integrated medical uh, uh, department, where which will include acupuncture, uh, uh, yoga, uh, Ayurveda. So oh, we where in, in, in in Gangaram? In New Delhi. Uh, in New oh, Delhi, in, in All Institute oh. of Medical Sciences. Wow, that, that is a huge, huge, huge accomplishment. Integrative medicine, I read about it, that you know, they've already signed, the, the, um, the government has signed uh, to start an integrative medicine department. Okay, we have a question here. Um, uh, hello, sir, can you tell about what is Hijaji points in kinetic acupuncture? What are Hijaji points? Yes. These are known as what are Hijaji points. These points are located about 0.5 chun, lateral to the midline. So anybody who's doing acupuncture will now easily understand these points are located uh, just 0.5 to lateral to the midline of the spine. And these are also very, very effective points for treating back pains. And uh, kinetic acupuncture, as I said to you, is you put the needle uh, much more deeper as compared to a normal needle, but you will release a twitch or a muscle twitch. And as soon as the muscle twitch is achieved, you will just withdraw the needle to the superficial level of the skin and retain it there. That is what is known as kinetic acupuncture. Okay. A follow-up on that? You, you're welcome to ask a, a follow-up question on that. Okay. Uh, someone said, um, let's see. 
Wonderful lecture, practical, need a lecture on PSNT. Well, we, we've, <laughs> we will be bringing a lot of uh, detailed, um, you know, we'll, we'll work with Dr. Kapoor to bring out the proper program. Yeah, for, have, for I'll be more than happy to do workshops on all these because they are great yes. subjects. They are new subjects where not much has been done uh, worldwide. So it's very good that, you know, there will be more interest into these. And we I'm almost uh, always ready to do webinars on yes. these Yes, yes, yes. Amazing information, uh, I think, uh, you know, and amazing results. That is yes. the main thing. Yes. That's the main thing. We can actually also share a lot of uh, individual uh, practical sessions also. I can do the, some of the practical treatment sessions on patients. Oh, wow. We are now already gradually into, into our practices. We are actively working now. We started with three times a week. Now we are almost into five days a week working. And we are the numbers in Delhi is getting really less now. Our positivity rate has come down to less than 2%, which is great because we were going pretty high. So I hope uh, things will get better. And that's awesome. where all of Absolutely. us are looking at. Absolutely. Any more questions? If you can't think of any questions right now, you are welcome to put it, in, you know, right. It, it's an FB live event. You can put it in the comments and, and you can tell us what topics would you like Dr. Kapoor to do workshops because we are bringing workshops now in the new year. So we, we can work with Dr. Kapoor to bring you what you want, you know, from a topic point of view. Um, okay. Um, all right. So I think, um, uh, we can wrap up now, Dr. Kapoor, I think. Um, Thank you very much. Thanks, Amita, for having been such a wonderful host. And I look forward to greater interaction with you in the future. Yes, yes. And thank you so much for everyone watching. Uh, please help share our sessions. Uh, these are amazing, amazing sessions that uh, we are bringing that can help people to avoid surgery. You know, it's so important, all these things that 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 we are bringing to you. And, and I, as a user, I have tried these acupuncture and I'm telling you, it works like a charm and I'm showing you my shoulder again. Um, thank you so much. Well, um, you have a good weekend and uh, thank, you. thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye.